Hi everyone. Um, in this video, I wanted to start basically a new series of videos. I'm going to call them Access Basic videos um, for new users, uh, people that are you know making their entry into Access. And I'm going to slowly cover various subjects and explain you know the graphical interface a little bit and where commands are, what they do, things like that. Um, in today's video, I'd like to talk about tables, uh, specifically how we uh, import tables, how we link tables, how we use the link table manager. Um, so let's dive in. So in this first scenario, as you're going to see here, I have two databases on my desktop. One is the front end, and it doesn't currently have any tables. And then I have a back end file here that has the table I'm interested in. So for this first case, let's look at how do we import a table, not link it, import it. Very simple. We open our front end database and we come here on external data, new data source from database, and we go select access. In this case, I'm working with an access backend. And from here, you see I have the option of import table, queries, forms, etc. So this goes beyond just tables. We can use it to import other objects as well. And we go and we navigate to where the backend is. We press OK, and then we're going to get a dialog that's going to give us here a listing of all the different objects that are available to us. In this case, it's a backend with only one table, so that's the only option I have. And don't forget down here, you have the option if you want to import relationships, menus, etc. But more importantly, here for the table, do you want the definition and data? Or do you just want the definition but no data in the table? This can be very useful at times. So I just come in here, I pick it, I want my data with it, press OK, and you give it just a second, and it's going to finish. And it successfully imported the table. And if you open it up, you because you imported it, you can do changes to the actual table object itself. You can do design changes, which you cannot do with a link table, obviously, because the table actually resides in the other um, in the other database. But when you import a table, then it's in this shell in this uh, database container, and you have full control over it. I wanted to show you a second way of doing the same thing of importing the table. So as you can see, I've deleted the table. It's no longer there. Let's move this guy over to this side. And oh, let's open the back end at the same time. OK? So I have my back end on my left side, and I have my front end on my right side. You can literally just drag and drop. And the table has been successfully imported. And like I said, you can go into Design View and make changes. There's no issue there. You may not be familiar with the difference between importing and linking. And right now we can look at the difference very easily here. Um, and specifically, we did an import. We imported the table. So what that means is we have one copy of the table here, and we have a separate copy here. They are completely independent from one another once the copy is made. So if I come in here, I have Carta Consultants, right? If I come in here and I put uh, Microsoft ZZ top, so I now have that information. If you come back to the original, it still has the old data because they're not linked. They don't communicate with one another. They are separate from one another. That isn't the case when you have a link table, and we'll look at that next. Now let's look at the case we don't want to import a table. We want to link a table. And this is the more common scenario in reality. And the, this, the process is very similar. So we open our front-end database. And we go into external data, new data source, database, access. And the critical thing here is we have to pick the second option, link. Now you go find the database, your back end, and then you press OK. 
And here you'll see, because we're not importing, we're doing linked, we don't have any other object options up here. We don't have queries, forms, reports, because you can't link to them. The only thing you can link to is a table. Therefore, the only options are tables. You select the tables you want. You select all, select. You pick the ones you want to link into the current database, and you press OK. And now you have a contact table that is linked. And how do you know it's a link table? Because it has that little blue arrow. And when you hover over it, instead of getting the name of the table, you get the path to the back end where it resides, where the real table is located. And if you right click on it to design view, you'll see you get this warning that yes, you can open it up, but you can't actually effectively save any changes you're going to make to the design. So yes, you can look at it. But anything you do, I want to, you can't save that. Yeah, you say, yes, I want to save it. It won't allow it. There's no way to do it. Okay. And if I come back in, you'll see nothing got saved. Okay. But the data resides in the other file, in the back end. And when we come in here in the table and we enter some data, okay. Okay, we enter some data. There we go. So we enter some data, we close the table, and we open it again. You'll see the data is, is there, but it's not really there because it's a linked table. Where is the data? The data is being housed in the back end. So if we open the back end, that's where the data truly is. And that, that's the whole premise of splitting a database. And I have a whole video on that that you if you're not familiar with the term and you don't understand splitting a database, definitely worth watching the video because it is very important for any database you're going to deploy to any users. Now let's look at, okay, I've got a front end. I've got a link table. And let's just say here, for argument's sake, for some reason we rename this database, okay? So now if we go back to our front end and we try to open it, it doesn't work. Could not find the file, which is normal, right? So it's looking for this database, as you can see, but it's not found. So how do we resolve this issue? It's very simple. Once again, we go up to external data. And here we have the linked table manager, the LTM for short. And you simply open it up. And here you have to pick which tables you want to refresh because there are lots of scenarios where you'll have more than one backend. It, it happens. So you may not want all the tables, but let's say we do. We just say we want these tables selected. And then I come, you select always prompt for new location. You press OK. That's the one I want to re, uh, relocate the back end of. And now we come and we find it. It's back end two, perfect. And as you can see, all selected link tables were successfully refreshed. And you close out of it. And now if you hover over, you'll see it's updated the path to the correct one. And we have access to the data and we can change it. And if we go into back end two and you'll see that is the correct data that we are effectively working on this database again. So that's, that's what the link table manager is for, is for exactly that. It's for updating and managing the data sources for link tables. There is another solution for a relinking, updating a link table. So we relink this table and everything's functional now. Let's bring it back to its original name. Okay, let's go back into our database. And as you're going to see, as we are well aware, now that path doesn't exist, that file doesn't exist, so it's not going to work. The other approach, if you don't want to go through the link table manager, is you can simply delete a link table and then you're back to relinking it. So you just come from a database access, you pick your linked table again, and you go get the source, which is the back end. You pick your table and you now have the link table. So you can use the link table manager and that is what it's designed for. 
or you can just delete it, relink it. So b both are fully functional. Neither one is truly better than the other. Um, the choice is yours. So I hope that uh, helps you demystify a little bit how you can import a table, how you can link a table, and how you can use the link table manager to manage and update the paths if you want. The last thing I wanted to do with this uh, video was briefly discuss backups. Um, there is a difference when you're using an imported table versus a link table as to what needs to be backed up. And the simple fact of the matter is when you import a table, that table is in the database you import it to. So if we're looking at the scenario that we were using before with a back end and a front end and we import the table into the front end, now it becomes crucial to back up the front end because that's where the data is being housed. But in the case of a link table, we know that the table isn't really in the front end. We're just creating a link. The data remains in the back end. So in a link table scenario, which is the more common scenario, what's crucial to backup on a regular basis is actually the back end. So just keep that in mind, depending if you're using local tables you, you, where you import them or if you're using link tables. So imported local tables, you have to do a backup of that database. Link tables, you have to do a backup of the original backend file or files. So keep that in mind. Per usual, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video. Um, please, if you don't mind, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Um, share if you don't mind, spread the word, and uh, have a great day.